There it is. Season two. We took a break. We're back with season two. So this is episode one. Yes. Um, You're Adam and I'm Steve. We're still. still yeah. Still those people. Yeah. We're still them. Yeah. Um, how are things going? How are you guys? How are you? I'm good. Yeah. You're good? I'm good. Well, today, today in new season, we're bringing you something just straight out the gate. We're talking about CX today, which... If you don't know, shame on you. No, <laughs> yeah, right. if you don't know, it's it's customer experience, and that's I feel like it's a loaded weapon these days a little bit. <laughs> well, just, so. because there's like you know what I mean. There's there's so much to it. It used to be very theoretical. Now it's very operational, or at least if you know what you're doing, you can make it operational. There's still some um, controversial maybe points to it. I guess more than us, you think? Yeah, you may mean so. You, I mean, you you're get some the, heat today. You're, you're the guru on that, but yeah. so when you're looking at that stuff, industry yeah. wide, yeah. CX is still somewhat controversial. I mean, I th- I think so. Yeah, I think I think it, a lot of people try to make it to be something that it isn't or yeah. too much. Like like they're trying to make it to be like something that's like way up here on a pedestal where it's like in the essence of customer experience. Yes, some of this stuff. Yeah should be like kind of no-brainer stuff and we'll get into like you know kind of a uh what's the word i'm looking for a uh controversial angle we take on it we probably yeah probably maybe Um, even it might be even controversial between you and i stay tuned yeah (laughs) next episode right right um but yeah so what i guess you want to well so a couple of i want to talk about um just right off the bat to to, to compare and contrast a couple of things Mm -hmm. because customer satisfaction yeah is different than customer delight For sure. And I think about back in 1999, I was with a uh, uh, mechanical contracting firm and they were very focused at that time about customer delight. Customer satisfaction is basically when you get what you expected. Mm -hmm. Customer delight is something that you get that's more or different than you expected. So that's kind of the setup, I think, of of, uh, the, the kind of the seat on customer experience. But then... I have this bias, and we've talked about this a lot in the car and, and yeah. on the golf course and yeah. in other places. Um, I think customer experience at age 56, I think that customer experience is a thing because customer service is failing. Yeah, yeah. And, and Do you want to start there? Well, yeah, I think so. So let me, let me hit you with another question. If every function of a business was operating at max capacity and ability and just top notch, right? Sales crushing it, really good customer service, the call center's crushing it. Research uh, and development. Yep. yep. Marketing is doing a great job, building great Quality. relationships. Yep. Leadership is doing great, like yes. internal, right. everything's clicking, right? You just have a business seemingly on all fronts that's doing awesome. Mm-hmm. So first, uh, maybe controversial take of the day. Do you think, if that is the case, if that's your current state of the state, do you think CX is needed? Me? Yes. No. And why? To <laughs> yeah. Talk talk about why then. Well, if, if a business is totally focused on um, meeting or exceeding customer needs, then you build that, in my opinion, and my experience, and you build that into every interaction, mm-hmm. um, internally and externally, because everybody is thinking about what does the customer need right now and deliver that at the bare minimum. And then they're also thinking ahead, what is the customer going to need, which is anticipating the needs. Mm-hmm. That, so those are the two things. What do they need now? What are they going to need? But then there's this whole other piece to check with the customer and say, how are you? Is this what you expected? Is there anything else? If you were going to be disappointed about one thing, what would it be? Mm -hmm. So there's this constant dialogue back and forth where the customer is constantly getting checked in with. I I think think that's... He rubs his chin like that, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) You know something's coming. (laughs) No, no. what I was going to say is I think you just hit on a really good point that I want to kind of extrapolate on a little bit is in my CX experience. Now, I've been doing like CX stuff, both like very directly and as it stands operationally in this world where CX is a thing. Right. I've been doing that for... Long nine, time. nine years, uh, you know, at least, uh, but I've been working in that kind of CX world without it being having that title for over, you know, 10, 12 years. Now, in the operational side of things, the thing where I see a lot of businesses failing that you just hit on, like the yeah. number one thing is talk to your customers right, exactly. and to understand their needs and expectations first and foremost. Yeah. So it's like whenever, you know, there's a lot of things that kind of come before that to like stand up. Yeah. CX things in businesses and kind of get that framework to start rolling. But the very first like actionable thing a lot of times is finding out who your customer is and yes. what their needs and expectations are. So if you're not um, 
talking to your customers and more importantly, listening to your customers? Or if you think, oh, we've talked to them enough, we lift, we've we listened to them enough, mm-hmm. or we don't need to talk to them more, or, we don't need to do another survey or anything mm-hmm. like that, mm-hmm. you, you're missing the point, right? right? It'd be right. like, right, because the whole thing right now with, with not even just CX, but businesses and marketing and everything in general um, is building relationships, everything very relationship driven Mm -hmm. business, not Mm -hmm. transactional driven. Right. Right. So if you're constantly trying to harness and build a good relationship, can you imagine not talking to your significant other for a while? You're like, I've talked to them for uh, enough today, this week, this month. Like I don't (laughs) have to anymore. (laughs) What? If you you ask Allison, she'd tell you, Steve, I'm fine. I told you I was fine. I'm really fine. <laughs> yeah. We've talked <laughs> no, about this. I could not already. imagine not checking in with your S- significant other. Yeah. Others. So, like, why would you do that with your the relationships internal and external with your business? You know well, I mean? right. So. Because I think speed has you know it speed has has become a thing. Convenience has become a thing. Um, mm. I'm starting to get stuff from Amazon. I don't know if you have, but literally in the last I don't know month, I start to get some emails now from Amazon saying, "How did it go? Yeah, yeah. is that new? Yeah." Um. No, you know, I think when they deliver, they'll they'll have a little like yeah, thing. Yeah. But if it's a completely separate thing, is it coming from like Amazon or the third party I, who knows? seller? I don't, yeah, I, don't I mean, it could be. The There's, emails. I feel like the Amazon stuff is changing. Yeah, I want to break down a little bit yeah. of just how, where we think the customer service. Okay, and if you didn't catch that, you know, a couple of minutes ago. There's a difference between customer service and customer experience. Yeah, yeah. We the way that we break that. this down in our business and mm-hmm. helping people, customer service is what's provided. Yep. It's customer what's... experience is what's received. Yep. And so too many companies think from the inside out, like, oh, we're going to define what customer experience is, you know, and then we're going to check all these boxes. Well, okay, that's what you did, but how was it? received yeah yeah exactly um, I, I was at and i'm gonna i'm gonna plug them right now it's at the advocate group which mm-hmm. is a um you know a financial investment planning um organization here in um the twin cities and i was over there last week and i was talking to the gentleman at the front desk and uh, long story short there's no direct dials over there. Yeah, yeah. You can't direct dial any of the leaders, the principals, their key people, your own investment person. And I said, oh my gosh, why is that? And and he said, because we want to make sure that every phone call, there's a human being that answers it. Yeah. Well, How often do you hear that? Yeah. It was so many times today, even smaller businesses, they, you're, they're on uh, um, like a... I don't even know what the technical term for it is anymore, but um, there, I mean, you pick up and you go immediately to a, an attendant type thing right, where right. it says, you know, for so-and-so press one for right, zones right. department press two, if you need help for hours and directions press, you know, it's right. And so I think if we can be candid, if mm-hmm. I'm okay here, slap me, kick me underneath, but, <laughs> but, but that's where I think my own opinion, that's where customer service started to slide yeah. because we think you know, and I'm probably guilty at certain times in my professional life of saying, well, yeah, if we can get away with electronic, you know, voicemail or hit one, hit two, like you're talking about. And, and, and the consumer, us included, we become so numb to that, that everybody does it, that when somebody actually picks up the phone, mm-hmm. I don't think we give them enough credit for yeah, yeah. that as a, yeah. as a consumer. And so I think little things like that have reduced the overall customer experience. And we've gotten to tolerate as customers, we've gotten to tolerate things that are less than the experience that we'd like to have. Do you well, agree for, with that? Yeah, for, for a while, I feel like there was this push to, you know, more technology, more technology, make things easier, efficient, faster, blah, right. blah, blah. But what got lost in the mix was just that. Because e- even at 36, yeah. you know, the age difference between us we always joke about even at 36 i find myself to where maybe a little bit previously when it first came out to be like oh i love that there's a chat because i can just immediately right. get to somebody and not have to go through this phone but chats. now now i'm like i just want to talk to somebody because somebody will be able to get my you know issue or whatever's going on and yep. solve it right there yep. and we have yep. a track record of it i can talk yep. to somebody i find myself doing that a lot more and it's funny when you look at like if you find yourself doing that as well look back and be like, oh yeah, I used to actually really like the chat service or just to be able to email someone. I didn't actually want to talk to somebody. It's like gotten to the point where it's, I mean. Do, do you think, because you use a lot of that stuff, mm-hmm. I don't, you know, I'll mm-hmm. look for the the phone number on a website, but um, do you think the chat function has gotten worse or is it about the same as that it's always been? Um, it depends on the business and the technology for sure. Like I will say when I'm dealing with flight 
mm-hmm. stuff, yeah. cha- flight yep. change, everything like that. I immediately go to the Delta chat. Shout out Delta. Yeah. It's like I I immediately go because it's huh. just texting. So and, it's good. Yep. And you can immediately go. The, the, the process of it is yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. But almost everything else, like I could probably count the number of chats that I like better mm-hmm. on one hand. Yeah. And the number of times I want to call and just talk to somebody straight up. Yeah. I yeah. don't have enough fingers to do that. Um. So customer service, customer experience, different. I just doing yep. a quick recap. Given, received. Given and received. Yep. Um, l- let me run this by you. Mm-hmm. Who's the first customer of a business? What yep. do we like to say? Yeah. yeah. Before we say, write down a piece of paper, write <laughs> yeah, the comment. Right. You know what, what you think it is. We'll give you five seconds. Yeah. Cue the Four, hold music. Three, two, <laughs> The one. first customer of the business has got to be the employees. Right. Yep. Got to yep. be the employees. And and be part of the reason, in my humble opinion, is they're going to be your first cheerleaders. They're going to be your first line of defense. So they're the first people that matter. If you take care of your employees, your employees, as they say, will take care of you. Exactly. So all of the people that have been around business and, and, and doing things for a while, and I don't know what the age cutoff is, but I just want you to think about that for a second, because we used to think back in the 80s that, you know, those employees, they're working for us. Mm-hmm. You know, you we wanted to tell them, here's what you need to know about working for us. Mm-hmm. And now these days to provide a good customer experience customer being the employee now rather than saying here's what you need to know about being with us what do we need to know about you about you right what do we need to know about you for this to be a good experience for you some people out there are going to be rolling their eyes i don't think there's many left Mm -hmm. there's a couple of dinosaurs out there i can think of one for sure yeah um (laughs) (laughs) um, but you got to be focused on those customer or the the employees as customers because when you treat the employee like a customer and you give them a good experience Mm -hmm. the odds of them providing that same thing go up it doesn't guarantee it unless you're connecting the dots saying hey did you notice that as a company we're providing this experience thing oh no i didn't realize you were consciously doing that Yeah, yeah but thank you for doing it okay well great i'm glad you see that and appreciate that we'd like to encourage you or even set the expectation that you provide the same experience for our and and it'll come it'll come natural because i think people will when they're working at a business or any type of company that yeah. harnesses that type of culture yes buzzy keyword um they will automatically want to do because they wear that you know role job whatever you want to call it at that business is like a badge of honor yes. right like yes. have you ever talked to somebody that works at apple or facebook or google or any of you know these companies out there were like yeah i work for the you know it's like it's like a almost a prestige thing if you work at a company where you feel you now Everybody has their own opinion on those three massive companies and what they're like internally as opposed to externally. But even small businesses, right? Oh, yeah, yeah I work for yeah. these guys. There's there's like that, you know, good aura and rapport about that business. So they they want to tell people about that. They want to say, I'm in this club. Yes. You know, I, I'm part of this. Right. And so you, it's like when you, when you have that good uh, employee experience... You don't even have to tell people. Yeah. So I know? think that's a great example of customer delight. Customer delight yeah. is that thing where it's so good what we want to tell other yeah. people. Um, quick question for you because mm-hmm. Apple just, just hit me. I didn't mm-hmm. think about this before we were putting this podcast together. Um, Apple, when you walk in the store, you're greeted almost immediately by a person, Yep. right? Which I think we would support that that's good mm-hmm. customer experience. Yet Apple is well known for not being able to get anybody on the phone. Yeah, yeah true, true. Thoughts or on like that or? finding a phone number and then the, the weight and right. all that tech Does it, support. Can you even and, find an Apple phone number? I haven't had to in a long time. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you can. Yeah. I guess I haven't had any issues with. But just right on the spot. And, um, yeah. Th- what do you think about that from a customer experience standpoint? Have they figured something out there? Or do yeah. you think there's an opportunity for them to step it up? Well, I mean, I certainly think they could step it up because nobody not doesn't like being able to at least find somebody that they can talk to, right. Right, you know, on a whim instead of like, yeah, it's great that you can make an appointment at the Apple store and go in for your appointment and you get taken care of. Like, like their retail experience is yes. maybe one of the best in the world. Yeah. If not the, yeah. um, everybody knows that you can check out wherever they right. move you from different places right. to make it feel right. like you're moving up in line. Yes. And yeah. you know what I mean? They, they just do it really well. I never realized um, that they had a really great, re- yeah. Like different tables you move mm. to. Yeah. They, they had a really great, um, forgetting her name now she used to be at burberry oh then she was at a- uh, apple yes. gosh uh angela Ernst or harvey say her last name yes i think she had a hand in designing that kind of retail environment i could be wrong but she's really great and 
they've they've done a really good job with that. And mm-hmm. also, though, if you combine that with, oh yeah, and we can get somebody on the phone to help me fix my stuff as well. That mm-hmm. I mean, why would you not want to add that? Right. You know. Right. One one thing I was gonna say. So we've had a couple hot takes so far. I want to throw another one at you because, yeah. and this is kind of taking a sidestep or maybe even zooming out a little bit before we dive into some more specific topics. Mm-hmm. Is when you think of CX in, in the industry, the function that it's become. You know, away from this theoretical thing into operational. Mm-hmm. What. <laughs> One of the things we've discussed a few things off camera just, you know, before in, in the past is the emergence of groups and certifications yeah. and things like that, right? <laughs> the biggest one out there and people Tell are going to know is CCXP. That's like one of the biggest things. Now you're starting to see professionals with, you know, their name, comma, CCXP. It's like, well, the, the, I guess the, the issue that I have with that, and I, I don't know a ton about it, so maybe I'm speaking a little, you know off the hip and out of turn, but it's kind of like, did somebody just make that up? And now they're like, yep, we can certify you in this. Cause I've seen jobs now that are like, oh, you have to have that certification. I'm like, I've been doing this for over 10 years. Right, You're right. telling me I couldn't get a job with that if I didn't have the certification that just right. happened. And, and, and again, yeah. I think this is a great point, okay, for everybody listening to this. And if this is any part of your responsibility in business, there is the theoretical piece of lots of, like people that have an MBA. Yeah. You can have a master's of business administration and and not know squat yeah. about actually doing it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There are people that can pass the CCXP, whoever the governing body is for that. <laughs> yeah. I don't mean to be you know disrespectful to that, but to me, the best metric of customer experience is talking to customers of those individuals. That's what I was just gonna say too. Like, what are we certifying? Like. Are is we, a, we're sort of, how do you not, like, even if you're not in CX, yes. how do you not have just like a baseline knowledge of a good customer experience? Right. Like I get there's operational things, right? For sure. Right. But like, it's not like you're certified, like that you've gotten a doctorate or you have some type of like, Correct. I'm CPR certified or, right. you know, like, you know what I mean? Or like, uh, you know, I'm a chiropractor. So I have, you know, some of those initials at the end. Like there's like physical things that like make sense to get certified in or, you know, a higher education or whatever. But we c- I, I'll i throw me in there, but I, I do think you t- can too. We are in a small business, you and mm-hmm. I, and we have a tendency to be a little irreverent. Um um, maybe bordering on rebellious at times, but we pride ourselves in being scrappy. And if it's, if it's the choice of, you know, getting some sort of designation and, you know, doing some, fulfilling some requirements that somebody else theoretically or academically thinks it takes to do this, that, or the other thing, that's fine. But the only way that we get paid mm-hmm. is to actually deliver results. Yeah, and I exactly. think that as people are looking at customer experience people, the best metric is to say, would you buy from them? Would you yeah. buy again? Yeah. Would you recommend people interact with that person? Mm-hmm. Because if you would, if they're listening, if they're entertaining, if they're honest, if they have integrity, if they seem like they have good knowledge, you know, and if they don't have good knowledge, do you feel like they're going to get back to you on time? Blah, blah, blah. That's a good experience because mm-hmm. I think people want people that they can relate to, yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. as much as anything else. The knowledge and that expertise, mm-hmm. that's going to be really important, but... um. I think having people that they can relate to, that's a, that's an important deal when yeah. it comes to CX. I'm glad you brought and, C- yeah. yeah, I was just going to say, no, and we, we can't forget that, you know, CX as a whole is, is the entire journey you have with a brand. Like mm-hmm. you were just saying, you know, the customer service is a part of it. Certainly a yeah. lot of that, a lot of customer service comes into play if there's an issue or a question, mm-hmm. but part of CX is, you know, building and making new and innovating to where you can get the customer to be like, oh, I didn't even know that was possible. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah. Not just like, oh, they fixed that right away. They yep. have good customer service yep. or it was yep. a good customer experience when i had an issue yes you know what i mean so it's it's the thing as a whole is it, you know customer experience to me anyways is the entire um you know kind of uh full picture of a yes. brand yes you know what i mean everything that's involved right so all the different touch points the all the different times you have yes. to and it right it's the whole experience it's not yeah. just a singular thing that's exactly right it's a mindset and i also think in addition to a mindset there is a skill set Mm-hmm. And part of the skill set, I think, in our collective opinion, is the opportunity to capitalize on when somebody has had a bad experience. Yeah. Um, that is an enormous opportunity to increase the quality of the customer experience. And we have had our some of our clients, I think think of one in particular, who you know lost a big customer at one point. Mm-hmm. 
um, and it was a you know retail customer. Yeah. And on the inside, it was interesting. Remember this? Mm-hmm. And and some of the employees were like, never buy from them again. Yeah, yeah. Right? They're not they're not buying our stuff. Or don't buy their stuff. Yeah. And it's like, wow. Yeah. You know that is that. And I think about in our you know as employers, you know, when we have a moment with an employee. See, the door's wide open yeah. to strengthen yeah. that relationship to say, okay, what's going on here yeah. from your point of view? Yeah, exactly. You know, okay, here's what I think is going on. What I hear is going on with you. And they go, yeah, that's exactly it. And Clarifying. then you ask permission. Okay, may I comment? Mm-hmm. You know, may I make a couple of remarks about what's going on here? And that can actually increase it because the fact of the matter, I think a lot of people know this, negative experiences, negative communications travel way faster. Way faster. Way faster than and positive. And there's, there's 10 times more of them too. Oh my gosh, exactly. Yeah. And so when we're talking about experiences, to be able to use those negatives to create an unprecedented positive. Yeah, yeah. How do you test for that in a CCXP yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or right. a singular survey well, or you exactly know. because you can have you can have a certification like that yeah. like a CCXP and know the steps to take but to successfully conduct that yeah, yeah. The yep. human relation skills. That's it. That it takes. Oh my yeah. gosh! And so you, that's that's the purpose of bringing this. Yeah, and you, you actually made a good point a second ago. When, I did. When you were talking when you were talking about the <laughs> the client we had that uh, you know their initial knee jerk reaction was well forget them yeah. you know a whole you know we're not going to yeah. work with them again yeah. there yeah, you yeah. know what I mean right if you're responding like that you're missing a big opportunity because what should be going on and this is part of the the CX knowledge because we've done this before and and this again part of this is just common sense again you don't need certification to tell you this instead of responding like that respond like oh my gosh they left us what what did we do what can we fix what are we not doing right what can we add what can we enhance like take that as a more of a wake-up call of like we failed that customer yeah. How can we let that never happen again? Yeah. Not get mad at them and blame them. Right. What right. you're blaming them for wanting a better experience somewhere else? Right. Or right. a better product, or right. better service, right. or better yep. relationship? Yeah. What? Yeah. You know? And so Right. It, and I just want to make sure as you're saying that that people are thinking about all of those individual interactions that we have with, you know, I'm not gonna say that kids are our customers, but you know, there are times where I want to make sure that my kids are having a good experience, yeah, you know, yeah. in our, in our family, in lives, yeah. I still have a responsibility to parent, which is yep. different, you know, than delivering a product or, or service. But, yeah. um, it, it's like, you've said a couple of times here today about the experience. It's, it's a process, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of a constant pursuit of yep. making sure that the other person is at the very least getting what they expected, yeah. you know, quality, uh, price, you know, convenience and all those Value. other things. Yep. But then if you want a positive experience, how do we give them something more, how, something yeah. unexpected? Yep. And that is it uh, chewy, you know? Yeah, the, I was just going to say, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, before we end this podcast, we want to point out some really good uh, customer yeah. experience businesses. And, and one of them is Chewy. Absolutely. Yeah. You yeah. know, Chewy, I, I think if you don't know this story, I'll, I'll summarize it really quickly and, and you can dive into it, you know, after you listen to the podcast. But essentially, Chewy, you know, there's the one example that a lot of CX professionals use. And that's, um, you know, that this lady had called up the Chewy customer service line and said, hey, you know, my dog just passed away and I just, the, my, my auto ship was on. I just had my dog food shipped like a day ago. Obviously, mm-hmm. I'm not going to need it, mm-hmm. right? So Chewy could have just been like, you know, sorry, you already paid for it. You know, really sorry to hear that loss, whatever. They took it a step further. They mm-hmm. said, you know what? Keep the bag, donate it to an animal shelter, the Animal no Humane charge. Society, no, no charge. Plus we're going to... Um, refund you the money in that bag. Okay, that that right there, awesome customer experience. Going above and beyond, they didn't have to do that. On top of that, though... Hang on, just, yep. just to interrupt. And, and I think for some people, when you just said awesome customer experience... I do think that at times that would be expected. Yeah, yeah. That, that yeah, the, cu- yeah. the customer might. That's think, what they want, right? From right, right. Calling. So I might that might have been yeah. a satisfied customer. True, true, true. It's yep. not customer delight. Yeah, yeah, yet. yeah. Yep, yep. But yes, yeah, satis- customer yeah, satisfaction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yet, good point. So what next? A couple of days later, in the mail, she gets a bouquet of flowers with a note from the customer service rep, agent, yeah. whatever they want to call it, um, saying, you know, so sorry to hear about the loss of your pet, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. We've also made a donation to the humane society. Right. So, okay. So they refunded the bag. They said, you know what? Keep the bag, donate it, do whatever yeah. you want with it. They send you flowers. They make a donation, handwritten card from the agent you worked with. Not not just like a pre-printed one. Right, right. Handwritten. 
I mean, it's, yep. there's the delight, there's the above and beyond. Yeah, for you know? sure. And that's just one example. There's tons of great examples out there of good customer experience. Yep. And you know what? That could have been from, that could have led, you know, if you just like let it ride because you're like, oh, we don't want to lose out on the money of that bag. Mm-hmm. And you just tried to make them pay for it. Or mm-hmm. if you just refund the bag and try to, you know, cut your losses. Right. Okay. That, like you said, that customer would have been like, okay. But now after they did all that, they want to tell their friends about it. That story went viral. We're talking about it years yes, later. Right, right, I mean, right. the amount of revenue that they've probably gotten because sure. they ate that maybe $200 total of everything combined. That's expensive dog food. Far, well, that and the flowers and <laughs> yeah, the guys, shipping and the <laughs> original bag. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I'm used to my dog. Great day. And there's a lot of money there and food. Um, but you know what I mean? And so to go above and beyond to create those good customer experience um, moments, which another thing we could talk about briefly is the, yeah. the um, moments and mountains. Go. <laughs> so that, that was one experience. Um, and it goes to show you how good CX can work. So the other thing real quick, I'll just kind of touch on Siri doesn't even really yeah. get it um, <laughs> is uh, moments and mountains. So you can have these individual moments within CX um, and you can create mountains right in CX and uh, Chewy doing that and going above and beyond, they created that mountain yeah. and that was pretty cool. Yeah. And so if your leadership in CX or, you know, you work in a couple of functions and you're leading from top down and, mm-hmm. and, and you're driving that good culture internally, yeah. you're going to empower yeah. Yeah. your employees and give them autonomy to create those mountains and, and say, you know what, you know, it might cost a little bit, but right. create that because right. that's, that's good stuff. Right. For you sure. Know? So that's a little thing I use too. When we talk with clients and we're yes. oper- making CX operational within theirs. Yeah. We talk about things like that. Yeah. So, um, so if you're sitting there and you're thinking, you know what? Um, these are, these are some interesting points. Um, you might've thought about some relationships that you have, some things going on in your department or your business that you need to take action on. Um, we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't say, don't do nothing. Yeah. You know, take some action. Like as soon as you click off this podcast, make a call, send a text, send an email, do something because the odds of making change go dramatically up if you take some sort of action at the conclusion. Because there's some reason that you you stuck with this podcast mm-hmm. this long. There's probably something on your mind or in your heart. So um, take some action, um, start some conversations or hire other people. Yeah. We might be available to yeah. have some conversations right. about the difference between you know customer service and, and, and customer experience. Um, train the people that you have to be better people because mm-hmm. there is certainly the process, you know, the methodical uh, methodology, the process, the systems on what customer experience is. Yeah. But the best way to build a good customer experience is to build good people and good teams and good yes. relationships. Yeah. And, and that's, yeah, yeah communication. Before you even build, you know, your, your, uh, your journey map and your roadmap to implementation and things like that, make sure your functions are firing all cylinders, sure. make sure the relationships are good. Your internal yep. experience is good. Yep. Yeah. And then we start tackling that. Absolutely. And last yep. thing is, um, if you got some tough things going on with employees, um, remember they're your number one customer yep. and use that as a springboard, um, to, provide even a better experience for them um, and, and for you. And then obviously, is it too shameless to just plug and say, you know, we'd love to help if there's yeah. an opportunity, just even a, a phone call or text or email. It's great. We always, we hear more and more on these, on the, the Instagram stuff. If you're not checking that out, um, YouTube is still mm-hmm. up and, and live. The Facebook page has been very active lately. Yeah. So if you're not catching that stuff on a regular basis, um, do that. But please feel free to, to reach out and yeah. Would this be a good point to say happy birthday to Nicole? <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's my wife's birthday today. Yeah. Yep. As we record this, I don't yeah. know when this episode will come out, yeah. but yep. Yeah. Maybe a happy belated by the time this yeah. comes out, but yeah, yeah, yeah no for doubt. sure. Well, thank you, Steve. Good to be thank back you. in the chair. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So thank you guys. Hopefully, you uh, you know, the CX, uh, becomes a little more real for you guys and hopefully you learned a little something here and, yeah. uh, who knows, maybe there'll be a part two. Otherwise there might be a series of shorts on Instagram yeah. for CX for sure. and yep. you know, there's a whole lot of things we didn't even touch on today and yeah. the whole, the whole operational side of the yeah. juicy details and getting in the weeds and yep. all that kind of stuff. We'll but be back in front a little, of them with CX. This is a little, this is a little preview. So yeah. Episode one, season two. Yep. Here we go. Thank you. Thanks guys.